Hello friends, with this video, we are going to kickstart the video tutorial series on data structures. Today we will talk about a very basic data structures called as stack. But before we begin, let me give you a very basic definition of what a data structure really is. A data structure is nothing but a collection of objects with some fundamental rules on the insertion and removal of objects. These fundamental rules are the ones which really differentiate different types of data structures as we will see in our tutorials. Let's begin with some basics of a stack. As I said earlier, there are some fundamental rules that govern each data structure. So what's the rule for a stack? It's pretty simple. Last in, first out. What it means is only the most recently inserted object can be removed from the container or the data structure at a time. Let's look at this simple picture to understand this better. Consider this as a jar of balls with only one open end as you can see here and which currently contains three balls A, B and C. By looking at this picture one can easily guess the order in which the balls were inserted into this jar. It has to be A followed by B and then C. So C is the last inserted object into this jar. Now let's say you want to remove an object from this container. Which is the object that can be removed from this container given the shape of this? Can you really remove A or B without removing C? No, right? The only object as of now that can be removed from this container is C because it is sitting at the top. Also, C happens to be the most recently inserted object into this container. Hence, in this simple jar, only the most recently inserted object can be removed at a time. Isn't that the rule for a stack? Yes, it is. Last in, first out. Hence, this simple jar has all the properties of a stack. Using this jar, we will look at all the operations and the properties of a stack in the following slides. Now that we understand some basics of a stack, let's try to do some operations on it. We will first try to insert an object into the stack. Consider this picture on your left. We have the same old jar with three objects, A, B and C. As we all know, C is the most recently inserted object. Hence, it is sitting at the top of the stack and it is called as the top of the stack. Now, let's try to insert a new object, D, into the stack. The operation of insertion in stack terminology is called as a push operation. Hence, here we are trying to push the object D into the stack. After the push operation, this is how the new stack will look like. It now has four objects A, B, C and D. Now in this stack, D is the most recently inserted object, right? And hence, D is the top of the stack, not C. So that is one of the fundamental difference after the push operation. Pretty simple concept, right? Now you know what is a push operation and how the top of the stack changes after every push. Now let's try some removal operations on the stack. Consider the same old container with three objects A, B and C. Now let's try to remove an object from this container. As we already know, object C is the top of the stack. Hence, if you really want to remove an object from the stack, it has to be C. The operation of removal in stack terminology is called as a pop operation. Hence, here we are trying to pop an object from the stack. Here is how the stack will look like after the pop operation. C is the popped object and the stack is left out with two objects B and A. Among B and A, B is the last inserted object hence it becomes the new top of the stack. Ok great, now you know what a stack is and how it operates. Now let's look at some special cases in the stack operation which you will need to handle during implementation. Consider this container. As you can see, the container is already full and here we are trying to insert a new object E into the container. What do you think will happen? Say you have a container of balls and if the container is already full, what will happen when you try to insert a new ball? 
obviously the jar will overflow and the push operation will fail same happens here in the stack data structure too if the stack is full and if you try to insert a new object into it it will lead to the overflow and in the stack terminology it is called as stack overflow in such scenarios the push operation fails pretty simple right now let's look at a different situation say you have an empty jar and you try to take out an object from it obviously you will not be able to get any object and the operation of removal will fail the same happens in a stack data structure too the pop operation on an empty stack will lead to failures and such scenarios in the stack terminology is called as stack underflow great now we have come to the end of stack data structure introduction the next tutorial will be on the implementation details and an example to show the power of stack in solving programming problems but before we conclude the session i would want to summarize the main con concepts which will be needed in the implementation phase the rule on which the stack operate is last in first out and there are basically two main operations that can be done on a stack it is push and pop the operation push is the process of inserting a new object into the stack and pop means the process of removal of an object from the stack there are two exceptions that can happen during the operations on the stack first one is stack overflow this happens when the stack is full and we are trying to push an object for which there is no space hence the push operation will fail the second one is stack underflow this happens when the stack is empty and we try to pop an object from the stack obviously the pop will fail do visit us at mustgan.com for more videos thank you